Deputy Leader. Today we remember the crew of Rescue 111 who gave their lives off the coast of Waterford near Tremor after a successful SAR mission. These brave men are Captain Dave O'Flaherty, DSM, Captain Mike Baker, DSM, Sergeant Paddy Mooney, DSM, and Corporal Niall Byrne, DSM. I want now to turn to the report by Niall O'Connor of the Journal, where he reports uh, the 26 investigations announced by the Garda Commissioner uh, of alleged abuse in the Defence Forces have failed to progress and are no longer live. The Garda are now investigating some other historical cases, and we are told that these are fewer than 10. The 26 cases investigated arose from the now deeply flawed Independent Review Group report. The review report was based on hearsay and not based on tested evidence. The damage it has done to the defence community, indeed the defence family, is incalculable and will take years to undo. So many in the Oireachtas were so quick to the gallows with their ropes to join the lynching mob. So few called for a pause and for, a serious, for the serious allegations to be tested in a tribunal. No member of the Defence Forces wants to serve with rapists, sexual abusers, bullies or thugs. We of the Defence family are proud, loyal citizens of the state. How difficult it has been for those who are gagged under pain of military law to stay silent, unable to speak out. Today I speak for all the voiceless. I say to the Tornishta uh, that when you bring the Defence Amendment Bill to this House tomorrow, please remove the deeply offensive sections that attempt to gag the Defence Force representative bodies. When questioned, the Secretary General of the Department said the gagging was at the request of the Chief of Staff. If this is untrue, the Chief of Staff must say so, and say so in public. With respect to the recent events in Limbrick, which are deeply disturbing, there is no one could defend the perpetrator. That said, how quick the political leaders, starting with the Taoiseach, were to jump on the populist bandwagon and condemn all who served, questioning how many of the Defence Force members are currently hiding with convictions of domestic, sexual and gender-based violence within the force. How quick social media class were to turn on the officer who was bound under military law to appear in court and report on the private military record, which was not a character reference of any sort. How quick the news media was to publish the 68 convicted or uh, awaiting charge uh, for specified criminal offences. Why were these portrayed as all sexual offences and how... <coughs> Uh, as that's how they're being seen. Did one politician step to the plate and take responsibility for the failures of the Oireachtas to provide a full minister to oversee defence? It is deeply disturbing to note that most senior officers, the most senior officer in the defence forces, the chief of staff, and the former chief of staff who, has, who does not wear the uniform and is not bound by military law anymore, seem unwilling or unable to speak out for their charge. Surely he knows that thousands of the women and men are exemplary citizens, as my colleague Senator, Senator O'Loughlin just said. I'm heartbroken that not one commentator could bring themselves to defend the good name of the services, Navy, Army and Air Corps. Today I ask who defends the defenders, the great women and men who today stand ready to serve, who today are in Pearl in South Lebanon. I'm proud to have served with great people and I will defend them to the grave if nobody else will.